Go live with Dr. Hyman. Go live. Okay. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey, how's it going? There he is. It's great, man. I'm, I'm so good. I'm so happy to see you. Happy to see uh, you, too. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, um, thank you. Firstly, thank you so very much for your time today. But also, <clears throat> uh, another big thank you, because I'm, I'm listening to you all the time at the moment. I'm almost finished. <laughs> Since we had that brief conversation, I've been listening yeah. to the Pagan, the Pagan. Pagan, Pagan yes. <laughs> Pagan um, or something else. I know, Pagan is different. It, it's a little confusing because I'm English, but Pagan diet. Um, and, I'm, and I'm fascinated. Um, I'm, mm -hmm. uh, there's lots to talk about. I'm excited. But since we're here, and, I, and, and as you know, firstly, hi, guys. I'm Orlando Bloom, and you know that because you're, you're on my live, right? But here, here's Dr. Hyman, who is um, you know, a phenomenal doctor who has written this book that I've been reading most recently, his new book, The, the, the Pegan Diet, but he's also a New York Times bestselling author uh, many times over, right? But what the heck should I eat? I love that title, by the way. It's so um, immediate <laughs> for me personally, something I think about all the time. I'm sure so many people do who are wellness curious. Right, right, um, have but lunch, right? <laughs> right exactly. <laughs> and how do I do this? But since um, we're also, you know, uh, here because, uh, as as you know, apple cider vinegar is a big part of my life. When I mm -hmm. um, um, when I became not only uh, not only have I been drinking apple cider vinegar for twenty years, but I also became an investor in the company because I believed in it so much and I had an opportunity. So I thought yeah. we would start this off by maybe I don't know whether you've got one of these. Do you have one of these? Oh, cool! What flavor? Great. Well, uh, should honey, we have one of those? Honey, what else? <laughs> <laughs> honey, and what else? You got honey. I've got carrot and ginger, by the way, which oh, I love. That's good. I used up all my other ones. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, good. Yeah, well, I, got, I got a whole bunch, but I, I took them all already. So my last one, I was saving the honey for last. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. To good health. To your good health. It's very good. Mm. I love that. Um, do you sure have you... coffee? But I'm not sure it goes with coffee, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually found, and tell me if there's any nutritional science behind this, but I've actually found, because I broke my back when I was 20. Oh. And for, so it was a big, it was a big, like, life-threatening kind of thing that happened in my life in my 20s. So I, I became very kind of um, health and wellness uh, conscious okay. then, because, uh, there, you know, like, Part of it was like fitness and stuff so that I was physically fit. I had to do a lot of things to reconstruct my body and stuff, like in terms of exercise and Pilates and things like that. But then yeah. I was like also my internals, you know. But I found, um, you know, like 20 years ago, I started drinking Bragg's in water. But I found that it was almost gave me the same like lift as when I had used to drink coffee. Like I yeah. would have a shot with a little bit of, kind of like with a little bit of honey and, a, in, and lemon in the morning, I'd drink it like a shot. And I got kind of, uh, I, I felt kind of upbeat from it as well. I mean, not, not, not in the same caffeinated way as I do from sure. a coffee, which is also standing by, by the way. Every now and again. Well, I, got, I got tea, I'm working on the tea. <laughs> tea, okay, good. Um, but is there anything behind that? Or is it just in, was it just in my imagination? I mean, I think, you know, uh, apple cider vinegar has acetic acid, which is essentially is, is an acid that has beneficial properties in the body, and it can potentially improve your blood sugar, cholesterol, weight management. It's got post and prebiotics in it. Uh, and Bragg's is great because it's organic, it's unfiltered, and it's, you know, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, no, I feel very lucky to have had it. Um, yeah, so that's that's good. That's interesting. Cool, because I... Yeah. I I, I've, I've sort of gotten, one of the things as well was like, I, I became kind of aware of how, you know, how, how little food I needed in terms of how much I thought I needed, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's this fallacy like, you know, of how much food to eat. Obviously I'm a seventies baby born and, you know, school meals for me were like, you know, I'm, when I think back to the kind of, food that I ate as a kid. It was like eggy bread yeah. in the morning, fried toast, so much saturated, deep fried toast. I used to love it, by the way. Oh, like yeah. Beans and eggs and like, and then lunch, there were these rich curries and things. And I'm like going, like, 
I wonder what that, you know, like obviously as a kid, like how that, you well, know. Compared to an American breakfast, that's way healthier. <laughs> is it? Well, that's, oh my God, yes, and the yeah. cereal and sugar. I mean, curries and eggs and toast. That's, that's like, you know, as opposed to what we eat in America, which is, you know, the worst possible things for our kids. I mean, what we feed our kids, we wouldn't feed to our dogs. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's right. You, you, talk, you talk a lot about um, food as medicine. Yeah. I and I'd love you to ex extrapolate on that a little because I think our people would like to understand that. I um, I've often thought I wanted as an actor and being on set, I wanted food to be a fuel. Like yes. I just was like, I want to eat food that isn't going to make me fall asleep by, after lunch because if I've got to do a big scene after lunch, I'm sitting in my trailer, I've eaten, or I'm having breakfast in the morning and I'm I want to be like alert and on. Yeah. Be, yeah. Like that's like yeah. there's this little window between action, you know, and cut yeah. where if I'm not in, <laughs> in the zone. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I thought of food as a fuel, but I love when you talk about food as a medicine and I'd love to I think my listeners, you know, our our, our audience here would love to hear more about that too. And and I think that ties in personally with like how Bragg's apple cider vinegar for me has helped you know, sort of limit, like it's, I've, I've found with some of these refresher drinks as well, I found that I kind of drink some of these through the day. I'm going to ask you about how many of these I should and shouldn't drink if you don't mind. Cause I like, I don't know if I'm, o, o, if you can OD on ACV, but food is, food is medicine. What is, what is your, what is, what does that mean to you? And, 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 and can you, you know, and I, which I, 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 obviously I've been listening to the, to the pagan dial and it's great. It's great. So, yeah. So, you know, like this Bragg shot has 20 calories, but what we were talking about before is that it's not just the calories in there that's having the benefit. It's actually the information in the food. So there's minerals and postbiotics and prebiotics and, nice. and, and things that help regulate your biology. So every single bite of food you take is both fuel and it can be good fuel or bad fuel, right? It can be dirty, dirty fuel, <laughs> which is, or it can be really clean fuel. Um, and in addition to the fuel aspect, it's, it's actually giving instructions to every single cell and organ and system in your body in real time. It regulates your immune system, your digestive system, your gut microbiome, your ability to make energy in your cells, your detox system, your hormones, your brain chemistry, what you're made of. Every single bite of food is what you're made of. And the information there has the ability to change all of your biology in real time. So it can do it for good or bad. And we see that, you know, bad food kills 11 million people a year. I think that's an underestimate. Um, that's the number one killer in the world today is diet. <laughs> We're obviously living through this COVID global COVID pandemic. And it's very interesting, the fear that's been created mm -hmm. for so many people around that. But when you think about what's just just at the end of the street in terms of diet. So, well, but let, me, let, me, let me mention something about the COVID because, because the truth is that if you're chronically ill or obese or overweight, that you're six times more likely to end up in the hospital and 12 times more likely to die. And the reason people are overweight or chronically ill is because of food. <laughs> so right. the solution to COVID in part is to make us more resilient and our immune systems work better so we don't get as sick, don't end up in the hospital, don't die. And we don't have to shut down the world. And that is our medicine. Be the uh, be your best doctor. Be your own doctor, right? That's right. That's right. And so my grandfather so, used to say, "You are what you eat." Yeah, right? exactly. He always exactly. used to say, "You are what you eat," and he never ate desserts. You're also what he you would... eat. Ate. <laughs> right. 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 So, so, so you were saying so. So literally, each meal that you have yeah. is information that your body processes. Yeah. Can you? You can so so obviously everything you're eating is is having an impact on your mental, your physical, your emotional. Are we Absolute, talking? Absolutely, I just right. got the most incredible email yesterday from someone who was the owner of a big fast food company, believe it or not. And I gave a talk to him years ago, and he said he followed the advice, and he said he noticed total transformation. Not only does his physical health, he lost a hundred pounds, but he noticed his mental health, his mood, his emotional regulation, all that completely changed. So mental health and food are to totally tied into one another. And we know this from the data that if uh, you look at clinical trials and experiments where they swap out junk food and they give them healthy food for people with depression, it works better than medication. If you take kids who are having behavioral issues in juvenile detention centers, you swap out the junk food for healthy food, there's a 91% reduction in violent behavior. I mean, even a 100% reduction in suicides and in this group, Suicide's the third leading cause of death. I mean, imagine if there was a drug that could reduce suicides by 
That's how powerful food is. And it can reverse diabetes, heart disease. Uh, it can help obviously reverse diabetes, even is used as a treatment in Alzheimer's now. So we really need to refocus on the, the way we're eating as, as um, thinking about every bite as information or instructions or, or medicine. And the quality has to be the central focus of what we're doing when we choose something. And I'll give you an example of how this works, right? Yeah. Let's, let's just take- like, Can uh, we just touch on that? Because I would say both you and I are incredibly privileged people. Right, we can yeah. sit here at this time of the day and talk about food, um, yeah. which is awesome. Um, yeah. And you're helping a lot of people about it, right? And I'm talking about brags because it's. But for people who don't have uh, either the time or the means for a diet that you know sometimes isn't, I I think it's exp it can be very expensive for people to yeah. eat good food. How do you? What do you do, what do you say to those people and how do we help you know what is the what is the what is the what is a way around it or a solution or a yeah. you know well there's a whole chapter in the book called make healthy eating affordable and, and right. uh, you know I think the myth that gets propagated by the food industry which keeps us hooked on their food is that cooking is a drudgery it's expensive it's difficult to eat well it's time consuming and it's all a myth <laughs> it's just a myth And rather than giving them a lecture, I said, let's just use this guide from the Environmental Working Group, which is good food on a tight budget, how to eat well for you, the planet, and the wallet. And we made turkey chili, a salad, sweet potatoes in the oven, you know, some sauteed asparagus, just simple food. And they, first they were shocked that they didn't, you know, they never made food in their kitchen before. And they saw how easy it was and fun it was. And I showed them how to peel garlic and chop an onion. I mean, just basic things. And, and they loved it. And then they, they, they said, I said, here's a guide and, he, and you can do this. They live in one of the worst food deserts in America, in South Carolina. And within the first week, she, she, the woman, mother texted me, they lost 18 pounds. The first year they lost 200 pounds as a family. Uh, the father was able to get a new kidney and they did it in one of the worst food deserts in America. And, and they had the ability to just learn some basic skills. So it's like anything else. I mean, if you don't know how to do something, it's overwhelming. If you don't know what to shop, where to shop, or where to get the cheap food, or how to cook, or how to chop a vegetable, you know, it's yeah. overwhelming. But it's, it's a skill like anything else. And most of us learn how to use our phones and computers and cars and all this stuff. And because of COVID. So that's, I think that's a silver lining, but they're tending toward eating more junk food and pastries and sugar, which is really bad during COVID. You want to basically focus on, on promoting your immune system strength and this, by cutting out all the crap and cutting out the sugar and the processed foods and eating more fruits and vegetables and whole foods. It's, it's the obvious stuff. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, the vegan diet, which is interesting, um, you know, I was you know, I've, I've watched Game Changers and, and I'm sort of, you know, been thinking more and more because of my, like I have a Buddhist philosophy and so I, I think yeah. more about the, the planet and, and, and consciously kind of, I do it for, you know, I, I'm trying to be more conscious about how I'm eating and stuff and I'm in a position mm. to be able to do so, which I've said is mm. lucky. But, but like I do have a thing where I'm like, I'm also O positive. I don't know whether that's the, o, the, the blood type diet. There are yeah. all these different diets yeah. that have been out. It's so, <laughs> it's so confusing, right? It's like, what do you do? And I that's think right. ultimately like where I sort of, sort of have landed is actually very, I think in that pagan, pagan space, which is since I'm yeah. listening to the book, I'm like, oh yeah, this makes sense. But yeah. you know, when we talk about, you know, when we talk about the planet and we talk, I mean, there was some interesting stuff that slightly blew my mind, um, but that, you know, uh, like, you know, it's just, it, when we talk about the planet, we think, okay, more meat, worse for the planet, right? Because, yeah. but yeah. there's a certain type of meat, right? And there's a yeah. certain type of farming. Yeah. And 
I'd love you just to explain a little bit of yeah. that because because I'm somebody who, you know, does eat the occasional piece of meat sure. because I think it's good for me. Not because yeah. uh, I want to, you know what I mean? Not, I, sure, I'm not sure. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's three big issues around meat. One is moral and ethical, which is going to be your Buddhist yeah. philosophy. Two is environmental and climate. And three yeah. is health. And they all yeah. get kind of smushed together. So yeah. the moral and ethical, if you are morally opposed, I don't have a problem. I have patients who are Buddhist monks, and I support Great. them to p pick the right foods. Um, and, and, and often, you know, um, I think the Dalai Lama eats meat, though. <laughs> Listen, I'm... I, uh, I, think he I, loves, I'm, I heard I'm, he loves steak. I heard he... <laughs> I've been practicing Buddhism since I was 15, and it is not about not eating you know i had a yeah. funny conversation with somebody and it was me it was it became a memeable event because i said i have a house in england where i have cows in the garden and i used to look at oh, them and go, yeah. Man, those cows are so, it became a laughable memeable joke <laughs> and the internet exploded with it i thought it was so funny That's so but funny. actually because i had this thinking at one point i was like i wonder if like as, as we were cannibals at one mm -hmm. time in the you know eating one another i wonder if there'll be a time where it'll be like can you believe we used to eat animals because maybe because maybe but the, here's here's the truth you know the rest the universe is one big restaurant consuming itself in other words right we, we like if you're growing vegetables you're you're it's an agricultural act it's destructive you're literally right. let's say you have a cabbage patch and you're plowing it under you might be killing rabbits right. and moles and mice and so is the worth a lot and there's seven billion animals that get killed every year just growing vegetables right <laughs> seven billion animals and not only that but like if you look at organic vegetables, how they're grown is using bone meal and oyster shells and all kinds of animal products right. to grow vegetables. <laughs> when you're, right. But your, your broccoli is a carnivore, but your, your steak is actually a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so okay. we just kind of like think about it. Uh, right. As far as the environmental issues, you're right. I mean, factory farming is an abomination. It's bad for the animals, bad for humans, bad for the planet. Full stop should be banned and that's it. And it's, yeah. it's a destructive force in many, many ways that I could take an hour to unpack. Um, but that doesn't mean that, that all animal agriculture is harmful. In fact, according to Project Drawdown, which we looked at uh, scientifically based solutions for drawing down carbon out of the environment and reducing climate change, uh, regenerative agriculture was the number one, collectively the number one solution. And that means using animals as part of an ecosystem restoration strategy where you restore soils and water systems and uh, increase biodiversity and pollinators and reduce use of agrochemicals and fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides, and you grow more nutrient dense food. The animals live in their natural sort of grass feeding habitat. The, the, the land is, is actually restored to its, its, its sort of more original state. And it actually is a very powerful model. In fact, the UN said by converting 2 million of the 5 million degraded hectares of land around the world, it's agricultural land for grazing, just two of the 5 million, we could stop climate change for 20 years, and it would only cost $300 billion, which sounds like a lot of money, but when you can see the amount of money being thrown around now with COVID, it's like a drop in the bucket. It's not even what... Yeah. They, I Wait, mean, can, it's, it's you like just, can you just go back on that a second? They said, if we did what? If, we, if the UN, you know, has looked at all yeah. these issues around climate change, and they said, if we took two of the 5 million acres of land that's been kind of degraded from agriculture and overgrazing, and we used oh. the principles of regenerative agriculture to restore the soil, the soil would suck out the carbon from the atmosphere at such a rate that it would stop climate change for 20 years and allow us to kind of come up with other solutions. And it would cost only 300 million, which is less than the government in the United States spends on diabetes and Medicare <laughs> so, in a year. So I, I think we, we, we have to sort of acknowledge that. And then there's the health issues, which game changes really challenges. And I think, again, it's not the cow, it's the how. Uh, if you look at studies, for example, of uh, people who eat feedlot beef versus a kangaroo meat in Australia, the kangaroo right. meat reduces inflammation in their body. The feedlot meat will increase inflammation. If you look at grass-fed meats, I talked about um, that are their plants. Their plants have all these medicinal compounds in them. There's 25,000 of these phytochemicals. The animals are eating them. They're chewing all these foods. It's going into their meat. And the studies have shown from Duke and others that these phytochemicals are in grass-finished meats, and they may be as high as levels as you'd see in vegetables. <laughs> so you're getting like vegetables and meat together. It's kind of a weird concept but it actually there may be a lot of benefits and plus you know it's one of the highest most nutrient dense source of protein and even if we decided all to be vegan we you know there's so much agricultural land that's not even available to grow anything other than grazing you know 40 percent of agricultural land so what do you do with that and and it upcycles the animals upcycle things that are, are inedible to us and turns them into incredibly nutrient dense food so i think you know I can go on and on about the studies around meat and health benefits. Of course. I think, you know, there's, there's both sides. I mean, I think we just have to sort of get a sense of what's common sense. What, you know, what, what, what does the science right. say and what does it and not I, say? I, and, I, and I really love what the, what the vegan, you know, what the vegan diet talks about. I mean, 
in a nutshell, because we've got some audience questions as well that I want yeah. to ask you. And I know that you, you, you know, we both got things to do, but in a nutshell, if somebody goes, okay, aside, buy the Pegan diet, right? First of all, because the book's great and it's, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, I really, I love it. And I'm listening to a podcast too. It's so interesting. Oh, Actually, my you. sister's doing your course, which is crazy. Oh yeah. Well, you should listen. You, you should listen to Fred Provenza's mm -hmm. podcast that I did with him. He's a rangeland scientist. I think it's called. Fred, who? Fred what? Fred Provenza. It's called Is Meat Medicine. It's it's really one of the okay. my favorite podcasts I've done. It's with this guy who studied right. animals and ecosystems and foraging for forty years, and he's just got some very interesting insights about it all. I love that. Yeah. Um, so one of the things. So if if somebody goes okay, uh, for the people who either a aren't going to read the book or don't have the time or whatever, but they so if, in a nutshell, and they're watching this, and you say okay. What what's the foundational what's the, the the foundational principles of the Pegan diet? What do you do to begin with? What is it? Is it because I liked your term? I think you said uh, not plant based, plant rich, plant rich. Yeah, and yeah. I liked that because yeah. I've always yeah. used plant based because it's been thrown around everywhere. But like yeah, yeah. <laughs> plant rich. Yeah. But what does that mean? And do you do you eat? Because I eat a, I eat a lot of plants. I eat a lot of um, plant meats. Um, and, um, like I said, I'm very like, like less on the animal products and I have a little bit of fish, but because I feel, you know, you know, I like to work, I just, you know, but what is the workout? Yeah. From working out and stuff. What is the, in, in a nutshell, if you, if somebody said to you, okay, I'm going to try this vegan, the vegan diet, what is yeah, that? Yeah. It, what would a okay, day? What are the principles? Yeah. So it's, it's pretty yeah. simple, you know, uh, and, it, and again, it's, it's, it's based on science and combining with common sense and it's inclusive, not exclusive. So right. first is, is understanding that food is medicine, focus on quality it has to be real food. And I always joke and say, you know, ask yourself a question when you're going to eat something. Did God make this or did man make it? Right. Did God make a Twinkie? No. Did he make an avocado? Yeah. It's pretty, pretty easy. And he, even a, you know, three-year-old could figure that out. <laughs> and, and then the second thing is uh, get rid of all the processed food in your diet. There's no reason we should be eating industrial processed food, refined sugar, refined flowers, uh, additives. We eat five pounds of additives a year, chemicals. I mean, just, they should just be gone. It's so addictive. It's unbelievably yeah, so addictive. It's designed to be addictive. It's designed, designed to make yeah, you want yeah. more, right? Yeah. And the next thing is, you know, make sure you, you pile up your plate with vegetables. So 75% of your plate should be veggies. I mean, and I make two or three or four side dishes of veggies and a small piece of protein. You, you talked in the, in the book about um, different colors of vegetables. Yeah. They, I've been told at different times and I've kind of noticed like for example, nightshades or bell peppers, right? Which yeah, are lovely yeah. colors. Yeah. But what is the thinking on that? Like nightshades. Well, bell yeah. Peppers. I mean, some people. Some people are reactive to nightshades, which is like peppers, potatoes, eggplant. Right. You know, um, but it's a small set of people, so I don't worry about that for most people. If you have arthritis, you might want to try a little trial. But mostly, the colors in plants are all of beneficial compounds and medicines, the phytochemicals, which are using our bodies using to stay healthy. Um, so you want to eat a lot of color. So eat the rainbow. You want to eat lots of good fats, olive oil, avocados, nuts and seeds. You want to eat, um, if you're going to eat animal protein, you want to make sure you're picking it from the right source. So you can buy regeneratively raised beef now direct from the ranchers at less per pound per serving then you can get a McDonald's hamburger. So you might have to do a little homework and research, but there's ways to get access to it and think about what you're eating, that you're eating more like a regenitarian. How do you regenerate your own health and planetary health? And, and um, also sugar and, and treats are not uh, you know, eliminated, but they're thought of as a recreational drug, right? So <laughs> you might like to drink tequila, but you're not having it breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's a question I wanted to ask. Oh, well, that's gonna come up about alcohol. We'll talk about that in a minute. One last thing before I do ask these questions, because I am aware that we've got, I've got a few questions and that'll take you a couple of while to answer. But uh, for me to know, um, in terms of like, there's, there's, there's a big fad or there's been a big thing about um, fasting, intermittent fasting. How many, are you a three meal a day kind of guy? Are you a five meal a day kind of guy? Are you a one meal a day kind of guy? I, you know, like I'm trying to, it's a very interesting thing and I've tried all sorts of things. I mean, yeah. and, and, it, and it's interesting how you feel, you know, I, I do find apple cider vinegar. If I'm, if I'm wanting to limit the, the, the amount of time that I'm eating, it, I can function and I feel great with the, with that, which has been phenomenal. But what is, what's your thinking on uh, distance between food and when you eat? And like, you know, there was that thing my grandmother used to say, eat like a, uh, breakfast a like a king, breakfast morning. like a king, lunch, like a prince and supper prince. like a pauper. 
right something like that so yeah um what's your thinking on that well i think i think you know the first principle of the vegan diet is food is medicine the second is it's personalization so it depends on what works for you um there are some people who do really well with time restricted i think that's an interesting point right everybody is different everybody <laughs> right. i mean if, if you're like a, a skinny you know you know, 85 year old woman who, you know, is trying to put on weight doing, you know, fast is probably not a good idea, right? If you're pregnant, it's not a good idea. If you're a little kid, probably not a good idea. Like if you're, you know, different health issues, it may not be an issue that you should focus on. So what I, what I think is that everybody should do what I call time restricted eating every single day, which means eating breakfast. <laughs> In other words, we call it breaking the fast, right? So if you eat dinner at six and you have breakfast at eight, that's a 14 hour fast. If you eat dinner at eight and eat breakfast at eight, that's a 12 hour fast. We should not be eating before bed. That is the key. That is really key because our body needs to heal, repair, and rejuvenate. So anybody can do a 12 hour fast. It's not that hard. If you want to extend it to 14 or 16, that may be beneficial if you have metabolic issues. How long before bed do you recommend? Uh, three hours. You, want, you do not want to eat three hours before bed uh, because that food will be in your stomach. You'll put the weight on, it'll slow your metabolism, and then you'll end up not being able to do all the repair work that you need to do at night on your body. So the body has this whole repair rejuvenation system. It's like taking out the trash. But imagine if you just never got to take out the trash and just kept putting stuff in the trash and you never right. took out the trash. Well, that's what happens when you eat all the time. So I, I really encourage people to go for periods where they, they take a break from eating. And you can do a day-long fast. You can do a three-day fast. You can do you know 12-hour fast, 14, 16. Those are all fine. And they all have the same benefits, like ketogenic diets, fasting diets. They all help to you know, take out the garbage, they help to improve your metabolism, reduce inflammation. Uh, so that your... idea that there's a certain amount of calories that you just need to consume in a day, it doesn't matter how you just want to don't go beyond it and sort of eat just within that window. Is that, is that right? Uh, yes and no. I mean, calories are something I don't focus on at all. Right. <laughs> because right. what is a calorie? Like, is it a calorie? It depends on whether you're getting soda? It healthy or unhealthy, right? Right. And if you eat the right foods, it's hard to overdo the calories. And even if you overdo certain calories, different calories have different effects. So they've done studies where they looked at exact same calories on a very low carbohydrate, high fat diet versus a low uh, fat, high carbohydrate diet, but healthy, right? Same calories. If right. people are on the low fat diet, they burn 400 calories less a day. <laughs> That's like running an hour. <laughs> If you're eating a high fat diet, you literally burn 400 calories more a day. Wow. I guess like going jogging for an hour without doing anything different. And that's because different macronutrients have different effects on your metabolism. And, right. And it's not just, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's calories, not a calorie, not a calorie. It depends where it comes from. Like 500 calories of broccoli is not the same as 500 calories of Coca-Cola, right? Right. <laughs> they're, just, they're just different. And in, in traditional medicine and nutrition science, they're considered to be identical. As long as you don't go over your calorie limit, it's fine. But that's just nonsense because food is more than just calories. Like we said at the beginning, it's medicine, it's information. Right. So I have a question from at Rosebud1117. Uh, She's asking, is it true there is a proper way to eat fruits, i.e. on an empty stomach or without other foods? Mm -hmm. And then the second half of that question is, does <clears throat> improper food combining, i.e. carbs and proteins, hinder the absorption of nutrients? I think that's a really interesting question. Yeah, so I mean, listen, it's, listen it's, it's a hierarchy of priorities, right? So the right. first thing is eat real food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Whenever you can eat it, wherever you can get it, and cut out the crap. And that's like, if people just focus on that, that's like enough. And then we get into the nuances. Well, when do you eat what? And it turns out that timing matters. And there's this new uh, devices that people are using called continuous glucose monitor. And, and you can actually see the effect of when you eat on your blood sugar. So if you eat fruit or some starch or alcohol or anything at the beginning of a meal, it's gonna have a worse impact on your blood sugar than if you eat it during or after a meal because you're gonna blunt the spike in your blood sugar. So actually the best time to eat fruit, I think from a metabolic perspective is after you, after you have a meal, uh, let's say a dessert, for example. Now people say you shouldn't combine fruit and food or you shouldn't combine this and that. I, I think that gets so confusing and complicated for people. It's, just, it's such a, I don't think it's That's a That's interesting because I'd always sort of had this idea from somewhere that if I had fruit after a meal, it just sits and ferments on top. It's not really, is that's not. I doubt you know, it. Your body knows what to do. Right. <laughs> you, know? you think as a hunter but, gather, you go, oh wait, I'm, I'm going to find these roots and things. And, oh, and now I'm eating these berries. So I'm going to save these till later. <laughs> you just eat everything. Your body knows what to do. 
And I, right. th I think if, if you pay attention and you say, gee, I don't feel good after I do this, then that's feedback. But everybody's right. different. So right. I, wouldn't, I, I would say don't let your dogma run over your biology or your ideology run and then over in, your biology. And then, and then combining foods. So like, you know, there was a hay diet years ago, yeah, yeah. like don't mix carb, you know, what's, what is that combined? Who knows, right? Just I think there's food habits. combining ideas. And I think that, you know, they're, they're quasi scientific. I don't think there's a lot of data behind them. And, Got it. and again, it's, 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 it's an overcomplication of, uh, of things that is unnecessary given that people aren't even doing the most simple things, which is choosing the right food and picking quality and eating real food. I mean, that's like a hierarchy of priorities. So, uh, I think we touched on this, uh, blue zones around the world still eat animal products. How can we find that balance? I think in well, a nutshell, well, I, I talk about it as condom meat, right? It's a side dish. It's not the main dish, right? Okay. So, uh, and like I said, well, I have something, but it's not the main focus and you should, you don't need that much. You know, maybe a palm sized piece of protein here in America, we have this giant piece of meat that plate, three asparagus and maybe a potato. It should be the other way around. We should have like, you know, four dishes of vegetables, like we had mushrooms and greens and salad and maybe a sweet potatoes and then maybe a small piece of fish or chicken or meat that's grass -fish. Is that like a six ounce steak as opposed to a 12 ounce steak? <laughs> exactly, here? exactly. Right. And even four to six ounces. It doesn't even have to be that much, right? And depending right. on your size. It, the, the rule is it should be the size of your palm. So if you're a little kid, it's a tiny palm. If you're a big Shaquille O'Neal dude, it's like a big, big, <laughs> maybe a 12 right. ounce steak. Um, okay, so how do I, uh, A. Shemiti, I can't get, I'm going to, A. Shemiti asks, at A. Shemiti asks, how can I uh, increase vitamin D intake while being sensitive to a history of skin cancer, i.e. without physical uh, sun exposure? So how do I increase my vitamin E, D? D. Well, there's, there's, D. there's some, there's some food sources, right? Fatty fish like herring and mackerel, uh, mm -hmm. and also some mushrooms like porcini mushrooms contain vitamin D. Although you have to eat a lot of those. Um, sunlight obviously is good. If, you, if you're worried about skin cancer, I understand, but you can always take a vitamin D supplement. And I think most of us, given the fact that we work and live inside, probably need a vitamin D supplement every day. And 80% and, uh, are deficient or insufficient. And, and we know from the data with COVID that if you're, if you're low, you're, you're more likely to be um, getting sick and in the hospital. Um, if you have adequate vitamin D levels when you enter the hospital, some of the data showed you're 94% less likely to get in the ICU and die, which is better than a vaccine. <laughs> so, and it's pennies a day and there's no downside risk unless you overdose, which is hard to do. Right. Um, okay. This was about alcohol, which I think is interesting. So, uh, Michael Diaz Nielsen one asks alcohol on overall health and how much is too much? Is there an okay amount? I mean, listen, we're in COVID. I think that's a pretty good question, to be honest, when people have been like, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, people have been, you know, I mean, in some countries, they shut the, al the alcohol uh, stores. They shut the liquor stores. Interesting. In some good country. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, I think people were kind of going crazy. And I think in this country, we have. And it's, there's been way more drug overdoses, more alcoholism. Right. That, that's really tragic. It's, um, uh, it's awful. The, tr the truth is that, you know, is there a safe amount of alcohol? Um, it really depends on your overall health and well-being. But I think, you know, for most people, a glass a day or every, you know, couple of days, it's probably okay. Um, but again, you know, we're consuming in this country often a lot more. So you have to start and you have two glasses a day or three or three beers or two beers. It, it, it does have an impact on your microbiome. It has an impact on your brain health. It depletes nutrients. It's hard on your liver. I mean, it's a poison, right? So the dose makes the poison. just like sugar. You know, if you eat, you know, a teaspoon or three, four teaspoons of sugar as part of a dessert, it's not going to kill you. But if you're having 34 teaspoons of sugar every day, day in, day out, it's going to kill you. Same thing with alcohol. So I think, you know, figure out what works for you. But for most people, um, you know, don't realize that it does have a negative impact on us. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Less is more probably. Shell.mcn says, asks, I'm following the Pegan diet, but I need to bulk up more. What can I do? Protein, uh, bulk up muscle wise, I'm sure you mean. Uh, and I think, you know, protein yeah. is the key thing for muscle synthesis. And uh, what we need is something called branched chain amino acids to activate the, the basically the, mach the machinery, the, the factory that makes muscle. Muscles. Uh, and those branched chain amino acids are very low in plant proteins. So if you're doing, if you're vegan and eating plant proteins, you're going to not have as much muscle mass. However, if you jack that way up, so you can, you can 
accommodated by actually increasing the amount of protein in plant protein, which the only way to do that is by protein shake. So you're having to eat some kind of processed shake. The second thing is you can always add amino acids. Um, but for do most you people- use, uh, In your protein shakes, do you recommend a whey or a- or Yeah, a well, whey, or a yeah, whey. Or yeah, there's there's different protein shakes. Some are some are plant based proteins that have jacked up amino acid levels. In them. What do you think so, about the plant based protein powders? I think they're okay, but again, they're often low in some of these essential amino acids that that are required for muscle synthesis. So, like for example, I saw one from Garden of Life that's that's like a sport protein, right? So, but it, but they they have to add extra amino acids that aren't naturally found in the plants. Or you know, there's there's a whey protein, which is among the best uh, source of protein. I like the goat whey particularly because I think modern dairy is pretty bad. Uh, and I think, you know, animal protein works better to, for muscle synthesis. So you'd have to eat a few cups of beans to equal, you know, a little piece what of about, protein. What about fish protein in terms of powders? Like, you know, there's those new collagen fish protein yeah, thing. That's okay. That's okay. 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 Um, and then at Bow underscore art studio asks, can apple cider vinegar help fungal infections by improving blood pH? And the second half is, can apple cider vinegar heal stomach cell wall lining or help with gluten intolerance? Um, well, if you're gluten intolerant, and depending on the severity, no, I don't think it would help. But it does help improve your overall gut health and improves um, the microbiome. And, and, you know, there needs to can be... Can you explain the microbiome in a nutshell, just because you've used the word a lot? So... Sure, sure. It's essentially all the bugs that live inside of you. You're like, you're basically only one... 10th human, there's about 10 times as many bacterial cells in your gut as you. And then you're only probably one 100th human because there's 100 times more bacterial DNA. So you you're have this whole living rainforest of bugs in there all the time doing stuff, making medicines and making good stuff, bad stuff. And if you fertilize the bad guys, you're going to get sick and inflammation. If you fertilize the good guys, which, which the uh, apple cider vinegar does, you're going to end up in, in a better situation with your overall gut health. That's why there's sort of pre and postbiotics in there that help with overall gut health. Got it. Um, well, um, I've, asked, I've asked all the audience questions that there are to ask. I feel very grateful to have had time with you today. So thank you so much. Of course. Thanks so much. Because, it's, been great. Um, it's awesome to, to learn more and to, you know, can I ask one last thing about Aspal Cider Vinegar just because I would love to know. Because sure. I'm, I'm like, I'm having like a shot in the morning because it's like, at, at that window of eating that helps at times but but like i like to drink these which the, these these brags refreshers which yeah, yeah. like basically i mean they're not like there's but the calorie is like there's a there's a little little bit of sugar but the sugar is in the form of honey um or monk monk fruit extract but is that or stevia but is that is there too much of these that you can have in a day is it is what's 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 too much because i'm having like three Maybe two okay. or three. And I think each one has different amounts of carbohydrate. So, or yeah, sugar, some right? of them are less. Like there's, there's one here which has got like zero sugar. Yeah. One so gram. Can, of, yeah. Which so you is, can eat and drink as many of those as you want. But the sugary ones, you probably don't want to, you know, go over, you know, uh, you know, the, I mean, how much sugar is it now? Like, so the acid, but my question is, is I can drink as many of these as I want because there's no sugar in it, but the, the citric or the acid, the, the apple cider vinegar acid, acidic, acidity is not a negative in terms of. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be. Your body should handle it. But if you notice right. how you feel and what's going on with your yeah. digestion, it's like right. <laughs> everybody's a little it, different. Again, right? it comes down to how do you feel and what's it doing for you, right? Right. I drank a kombucha, which is supposed to be really good, but it had something in it that caused my stomach to get upset. So, you know, like, you never know. So everybody should pay attention, but most people tolerate it pretty well. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. First thank of all. you. So thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Of course, of um, course Orlando. Um, great to see you. The time. It's great to see you. And, um, you know, when, when, it, when, it's, when there's a good opportunity, I'd love to uh, sit down in person. Absolutely. Great. Are you in LA? Where are you? Yeah, in LA. Okay. So, All right, uh, I'm coming. I'm coming back there soon. Leaving Hawaii. Good. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, it. I'll hit and, you up. Uh, yeah, do it. All right, Thanks. take care. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, should I say? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs>